Hello, welcome to our Unity 101 series. I'm Abdullah. In our last video, we really got comfortable coding for Unity in C Sharp. In this new video, I'm going to teach you how to use the input system, probably the most important system in video games ever. Player input. So let's get started. Let's install Unity's input system. To do that, we go to Window, Package Manager, and then search for input system. Click on that and then we click install. A warning pop-up might appear asking you if you want to switch from the native input system to the new input system. You should choose yes. At this moment, Unity will restart your project. So let's check if the input system was installed correctly. Go to package manager again and see that the input system is up to date down here. Now let's start with the input system by going to edit project settings. And then we'll see that there's an entry on the left for input system. Press on create settings asset. This will create a file that will manage the input system settings. Now, if you click on player on the left side there and scroll all the way down, we can see that we're using the input system package instead of the old input manager. More on player settings in a future video. Now we are ready to use the input system. Double click on rotating cube script, open up Visual Studio. At the top, let's type using Unity Engine dot input system. This will include the input system library in our script. To use the input library, Let's first create a public variable for our keyboard. Let's type public type keyboard with the name of keyboard. Now let's assign the current active keyboard to our keyboard variable by typing keyboard equals to keyboard dot current. The thing that I want to do now is rotate the cube if the W button was pressed on the keyboard. And to do that, I want to capture the changes to the keyboard in the update loop, then rotate the cube there. To do that, we create an if statement to make sure that the keyboard is not null. Then we create another if statement with keyboard dot w key dot is pressed inside of it. This will return true if the w key is pressed and will return false if the w key is not pressed. If it's true, rotate the cube and then print update to the console. If you remember, the update function will update every frame. But our human brains don't operate in frames per second as a unit of time. So we will multiply the rotation by the amount of time that has elapsed since the last frame. And that's provided by the Unity engine under time dot delta time. This will make it so the amount of rotation will be per unit of time and not per frame. This makes it a lot easier when you're designing the game later on in the Unity editor. Now, if we go back to the Unity editor, press play, and then press W on our keyboard, we will see update being printed to our console. As you can see, the rotation is very slow because right now we have set the Y rotation to two and that's happening every second. We want to increase it to something like 50. 50 rotation units per second. And now the cube is rotating by 50 every second and not for every frame. If the game slowed down for any reason, the cube will still continue rotating, regardless of how many frames the engine rendered on the screen. Wasn't that exciting? This is by far my favorite subject within game development. I mean, game feel, right? But what we did today just scratched the surface of Unity's input system. I highly recommend that you go to Unity's documentation and read more about their new input system. Join us next time when I talk about another very exciting topic, physics and collisions. I'll see you there.